Hey guys and welcome to the Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday Tip. I thought that this week we would talk about preventing disease and stress in our fish. I get asked all the time about how to treat disease, what disease is this, and the reality is prevention is key. So let's talk about what causes disease, how we can help our fish fight off disease, and some of the stressors that are most likely to cause issues for our fish. Stress, believe it or not, is the number one cause of disease in our fish. It's caused by putting a fish in a situation that is beyond its normal level of tolerance. Fish can only survive in a situation like that for a finite amount of time. So what happens when a fish becomes stressed? Hormones are produced from the adrenal gland. That's the first response, which makes their blood sugar go way up, and they use any stored sugars in places like their liver immediately in order to organize a fight or flight response. This gives them a big energy burst, but it also depletes all of their reserve. Because of this change in metabolization, their osmoregulation is disrupted, which means they're using all of their energy just to be a fish. This also causes them to absorb excess water from their environment, which disrupts things even further. Their breathing goes up, their blood pressure goes up, so all of these responses mean that they're using all of their energy in that one moment. It means they have nothing left to fight disease. This leaves them wide open to issues with any pathogens that might be in our water. So what is disease? It basically just means that our fish's condition degrades to the point that they can no longer uh, maintain normal function. And that can be any host of things. That can be parasites, internal or external. That can be viral. That can be bacterial. And any of these things can cause our fish to become sick. So the reality is, is what we want to do is provide them the best environment so that their natural response can fight off infection. So what causes stress? There's quite a few things that can cause stress, some of which are more obvious than others. There's physical stress, the temperature of the tank. Is it way too hot? Is it way too cold? Is it way too bright? Light can play a big factor. Lots of noise can cause a factor. Dissolved gases can cause a problem. Overcrowding is a big one. Territorial disputes or even breeding stress when, when a pair sets up shop and they're terrorizing everyone else can cause the other guys to get sick. And then there's, you know, your internal and external parasites as well as viral, bacterial, and the other sort of insidious things that crop up. Handling your fish it can cause stress and damage, as can shipping. But I think one of the biggest stressors to our fish is the improper use of medication. If you think about it, medication is inherently toxic, and all it's doing is creating an artificial break in the fish's response until their body can fight off the disease. So how do fish fight disease? Well, the first line of defense is the slime coat, and it's basically a mucus barrier um, on the fish's skin and scales that prevents the actual entry of any pathogens into the fish's body. It lubricates the fish and aids in osmo osmoregulation. Their scales and fins are another line of defense. If those get damaged, then it opens them up to infection. And then we have their antibodies and immune response, which when they're stressed is compromised because of the oversaturation of the water in freshwater fish, as well as the depletion of the minerals and sugars that they need to sustain normal life. All of that goes into that quick burst of you know, protective energy and it depletes the source for them to have an actual immune response in order to fight disease. Now, medications often damage the mucus, especially those given in a bath treatment when you add them to your tank rather than feeding them. It's important to realize as well that if your temperature is way too cold, it completely stops the immune response of the fish. The antibodies aren't produced and the inflammation reaction that's so valuable for fighting disease can occur. Now, how do we prevent disease? What do we do? How do we, how do we make sure our fish aren't stressed? Good water quality is the number one thing. Consistent, clean water. The next thing is don't overcrowd them. You know, stock your tanks appropriately. Too many fish 
causes a lot of problems. And this is why a lot of times you'll see disease crop up in stores. The fish are overcrowded, there's a lot of territorial issues, you know, sometimes the water quality isn't always the best, and the fish become more prone to disease. And that's why it's so important, no matter where you get your fish, that you quarantine them before adding them to your display. The fish are already stressed, then they're handled, which damages their slime coat and possibly their fins. Maybe they have a little ammonia burn that has degraded their fins. All of this makes them more susceptible to disease, so it doesn't mean that the fish is necessarily completely unhealthy, it just means that it's stressed to the point that it is most likely that that's when they'll get sick. Make sure that you provide your fish with good oxygenation. Make sure you provide them with an appropriate diet. Just because a fish will eat something doesn't mean it's what's best for them. Research what they should be eating. Try and provide a very balanced diet that addresses these nutritional needs. We know even in people that the better you eat, the more healthy your diet, the better your environment, the more you thrive. The same goes with fish. And it's really, really important to keep your equipment clean. You know, this is your siphon tubes, this is your nets, this is your buckets. Really make sure when you're done using them that you flush them with very hot water and let them dry completely. And if you're going to use a net to net fish, moisten it first. It really protects their slime coat. Even if you get fish from a source where they've already been quarantined, it's very important to quarantine again, especially if they're shipped because of all these factors. If a fish is handled, if it's gone through stress, if it's gone through, you know, the whole shipping process, it's made them more susceptible. So an otherwise healthy fish may be more prone to pathogens that are in your water that you're unaware of. You know, it's, it's pretty normal to have low levels of various things in your tank that don't affect your fish at all because they're healthy. When you get a new fish in, you need to really bolster them by feeding them really well, keeping their, ta their temperature consistent, keeping that water really, really clean. And this will give them the chance to relax, boost up their immunity, and be safe from disease. Dilution is almost always the key, and I much prefer to do a lot of water changes and feed my fish really well rather than using medications that are toxic. Now there are some exceptions. If you have a visible parasite, you need to treat it. If you have intestinal parasites, you probably need to treat it. And there are plenty of diseases that need treatment, but alongside treatment, it is so important to keep your water clean and to feed the fish well to give them the ability to fight disease as well. Medications are simply an artificial way to slow disease for the fish to be able to fight it. I hope that helps and thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything that you would like for me to discuss or any suggestions, comments, or questions. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Also, please don't forget to subscribe. 